I'm talking about young shakes. I'm to represent Jesse James. And this for my city. Hey, hey, I do it for my city. Lacey L. Rice Jr. of Rice Fame Group welcoming you to chat with HBCU Champions Season 2, Episode 3, featuring head coach Pat Kendrick from Xavier University of Louisiana, whose volleyball team won the Red River Athletic Conference Championship this year. Welcome to the coach. I'm sorry, welcome to the show, coach. Please tell us about yourself. Thank you including uh, your coaching experience? Well, I, I guess I got here to Xavier in 2017. And since that time, we've won a conference championship every year. Before I came to Xavier, I was at Virginia Tech for two years as the director of volleyball operations. And then before that, I was the head coach at George Mason University in Fairfax, Virginia for 30 seasons. Uh, before that, I was an assistant coach for two seasons. And before that, I played volleyball and ran track there. So that's going way back. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, as you said, ever since you've been to Xavier, you, you've been winning. So that that's a, that's a terrific feat. And, uh, you know, we have to definitely congratulate you because you started off in the Gulf Coast at Athletic Conference and then went right over to the Red River. So this is actually your what second year in the Red River Athletic Conference and you've won the championship both years? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, um, tell us about this year's team. Um, who were your key athletes and some of their accomplishments? Well, first I'll mention Kennedy Wade. Uh, she was named Xavier's first All-American this year. She's one of our outside hitters and she's a junior on the team, had a great season. Um, another player we had who I guess finished up her senior season with us, Angela Agano, was actually the most valuable player at the conference championship. And, and Angela is another outside hitter for us. Um, we had Linda Moonguy, who was one of our liberos who also finished up her season this year or her career this year at Xavier. She was, um, she made the all tournament team. And, and so Kennedy Wade made the, um, Kennedy Wade, like I said, was an all American. Kendall Mack made the all tournament team. We had a number of people who stepped up and, and so for the, the Red River championship match, we were down two sets to zero and then came back and won the next three. In the fifth set, it's almost unheard of that you could be as down as far as we were and come back and win, but we were actually down 14-11. In the fifth set, you played at 15 points. And so, you know, we sided out to get us point twelve and never looked back and just kind of surged through. And Our Lady of the Lake, who we played in the finals, didn't score another point. So we had a, a lot of people step up to make that happen. Oh, wow. Well, um, since you since you brought up uh, Our Lady of the Lake and and uh, who you played in the championship, could you tell us more about your conference and the competition there? Well, definitely some strong teams. You know, at this point, everybody's bringing their best game when they play against us. And during the regular season, we actually lost both matches to Our Lady of the Lake. We did not play well. They played much better than we did. And so this is the second year in a row that we played them in the finals. And I guess two seasons ago, we were up two sets to one. They came back and tied it, you know, by winning the fourth set. And then we beat them in the fifth set, 15 to four. So it was kind of, we, we kind of went through them in the fifth set. And then this year, like I said, they were up two sets on us. And then we came back and won the next three, but the conference is getting better. There's some strong teams. Like I said, it, they're going to give us their best game every time we step on the floor at this point. Okay. All right. So um, in that particular conference, who was the, um, who was the powerhouse in that conference before you arrived? Well, 
Houston Tillotson was, you know, one of the strongest teams in the conference before we got to the Red River. And then Our Lady of the Lake was the other really strong team in that conference. And so, you know, they kind of dominated for, for a while. And then we, we joined the party. Okay. So for those who do not know, Houston Tillerson is another HBCU. However, the Red River Athletic Conference is primarily a PWI conference. So um, um, Xavier went from the Gulf Coast Athletic Conference, which was an HBCU conference, over to this PWI conference, and they carried their winning traditions with them. Um, so uh, can you tell us more about your postseason, especially um, up in the uh, NAIA National Championship Tournament? Well, after we beat Our Lady Lake in the final, we traveled to Watsahatchee, Texas to play SAGU, which is, I think it stands for Southwestern Assemblies of God University. And so SAGU was ranked number seven or eight in the country. They were undefeated. And we actually had played them earlier in the year and lost to them pretty handily in three sets at, back in October. And so, you know, playing them a second time, if we, if we win this match, we go to the final site in Sioux City, Iowa. So we, we kind of came into the match knowing that we certainly had to play much better than we did the first time we saw them. And so we did play better the first couple of sets, but we still lost the first two sets. We were down two sets and almost similar situation to what happened against Our Lady of the Lake in the conference final. We won the next two sets. And, but in the fifth set, unfortunately, we kind of came up a little bit short and we lost 15-12 in the fifth. But I thought the team played really well and certainly we could have packed it in after being down two sets to the number seven team in the country. But we didn't do that. We came back, fought hard and and like I said, ended up winning the third and the fourth sets to push it to a fifth set. Okay. So that, that ended our season because we would have needed to win that match in order to continue on in the NAIA championships. Okay. So they were number seven in the country. Um, did your team achieve a national ranking this year? We got votes for the top 25. We kind of got votes a couple of times during the season. And I'd say probably the final tally, we would have been in the high 30s, maybe somewhere around there. Uh, we, we did something a little bit different this year. We didn't have a final season uh, top 25 voting, but at some points during the season, we would get votes a couple of times. And like I said, we'd usually be in the high 30s. Okay, okay. Um, well, what honors do you receive this year? Let's see. I guess I, I got coach of the year uh, for the team winning the championship. And I think that's pretty much it. <laughs> I think that's probably it. Uh, I don't know if they've done the Louisiana. You know, they usually, there's like a Louisiana uh coach of the year kind of thing. But I, I don't know that that came out yet. Or I, I can't remember if that's a end of the academic year kind of award. Okay. So um, kind of uh, uh, bring, I'm going to bring something up that has nothing to do with your coaching um, or your team this year. Well, not directly, uh, but you are currently the interim athletic director as well. So uh, how has that uh, yes. uh, impacted your season or impacted your coaching? I'm taking on that extra duty where now you're over the entire uh, athletic department. Well, fortunately, I started doing this in our off season. I mean, we're still training. The team is still practicing, you know, throughout the week, lifting, all of those things. And so, yeah, it's just a lot of little projects, putting out a lot of fires, you know, attending a lot of meetings and, and that sort of thing. So it's, it's, it's hectic, but it's not as hectic just because we're, we're not in season right now, even though, like I said, the team is still training and everything. So it's definitely a different, uh, different viewpoint on, on the whole show. Okay. So has, is this your first time um, being in a role like that where you are over, 
uh, or being an administrator for the entire athletic department or have you done that in previous stops? Well, here at Xavier, I, I had been given an assistant athletic director role. So, you know, did a little bit of uh, that's this sort of thing. But in terms of being in charge of an entire department, no, this is the first time. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, it, it, uh, and we're going to get off this subject here in a moment, but um, was it what you expected? Uh, I, I, I guess I kind of went in with it, not really knowing exactly. I mean, I, you know, I knew obviously there was going to be a lot of issues in terms of, you know, working things out with different coaches and administratively kind of some things across campus. And so I, I guess I kind of went in with the idea of, okay, whatever this is, let's do this, you know? So I, I don't know that I had a whole lot of expectations, but it's, it's certainly, there's a lot to it for sure. Okay. Um, well, going back to the volleyball, um, what do you look for in prospects? Well, first of all, they have to be good students. Uh, we don't have basket weaving here at Xavier, so they've got to, they've got to be really good students. So we we got to make sure we're you know recruiting academically strong students. Uh, the other thing, and depending on what position we're looking for. If we're looking for setters, we're looking for, I call them court generals, you know, players that are kind of running the offense and have a good feel for what's going on on the court. And, you know, certainly see what kind of personality they have working with the hitters because hitters can be divas and, and that sort of thing. So, you know, you need somebody who's got a, a good personality, who's willing to, you know, take the blame sometimes when it's not even them, but they try to find the best thing they can get out of their hitters. Uh, outside hitters, we're looking for athletic, quick. Can they pass? You know, we like our outsides to be able to play all the way around, even though in the NAIA, there's unlimited substitutions, but we like to have our outside hitters be able to hit in the front row and the back row. So we kind of look for good ball control players and players who can basically put the ball away. I'd say the majority of volleyball offense is run through the outside, so you need an outside hitter who can put the ball away at the end of a long rally. Uh, middle blockers, we're looking for quick. We're looking for players that can close the block well, can make themselves available to hit, um, just have a good sense for, we, we call it middle blocker first as opposed to middle hitter, because in my mind, it, their number one job is to block the ball. So we're looking for good blockers in that position. And then secondarily, somebody who can put the ball away when they get fed. The, the middle blockers, tend not to get set as much, just kind of the nature of the game. So if they do get set, we want them to be able to put the ball away. Uh, right sides, opposites, we're, we're looking for players who, again, they're, they're more likely to block the other team's best attacker because most of the teams are going to set to their outside. So we need a right side player who can block the ball. And so, and they're going to be in a position where they're going to get set a lot, maybe some out of system, you know, not, um, planned plays so they've got to be able to put the ball away on that side as well and then the libero position is again somebody who can control the backcourt in terms of the ball control has good serve reception skills good defensive skills you know they bring a good energy because the other team will go up and have their best swing and having somebody who can just pop the ball up can kind of deflate the other team's side and then build up our side so position wise that's kind of what we're looking for now, in relations to other, um, some of the top NAIA teams, um, would you consider your team to be average size, small, or uh, maybe even larger than some of them? I think probably we're, we're probably pretty comparable, you know, in terms of size and you know, there, there, of course, there are some teams that might have some taller players and, and that sort of thing, but it's not like in the, you know, the top NCAA Division One level where you've got, you know, six, three outside hitters and, and that sort of thing. That's kind of rare at the NAI level, but I'd say we're probably pretty comparable in size. You know, we, yeah, I'd say that's probably pretty, pretty fair to say. Okay. okay. Um, well, uh, you mentioned that uh, first and foremost, they have to be good students. 
Uh, please tell us more about Xavier of Louisiana. Uh, what are some of the major programs and what are the most common majors that your athletes take? Well, Xavier, I guess, is mostly known for our bio pre-med program and kind of the history of that major is Xavier has put, at least the last reports we've gotten, Xavier had put more um, African-American students through med school than any other school in the country. So, so that's definitely something that people look to Xavier in terms of what they want to major. And I say at least half of our team kind of start out in that major. Our business program is very strong. So we've got a number of business majors. We've got you know, kind of a combination of communication, some education, some sociology. You know, we've got a number of really strong majors. Pharmacy is a very popular major here. And so our pharmacy school is one of the best. And so I'd say some of the, those are some of the majors. But at Xavier, one of the good things is that you major in something and you can minor in something else. So we've had students that have, you know, we have one right now who's um, a dual engineering uh engineering uh, physics major and she's minoring in Spanish, <laughs> you know, so you can kind of find a little bit of what you like. We had one that, you know, was a sociology major and she minored in art. And so you can kind of find a little bit of whatever you like here. And, but again, you know, all the majors are, are really strong. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, uh, what, and, 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 um, uh... I'm assuming since you are the interim AD, you don't have a problem getting support for your program. But uh, as far as the institution, um, the fan base, and even the community, what type of support are you getting? Well, you know, it's, you know, basketball is very popular. Um, so we get a number of students, you know, attending basketball games and, and I think the other sports have done quite well. It's just a matter right now trying to get the word out, trying to encourage the students to come out and support tennis. Tennis, are, both our men's and women's teams are nationally ranked. Our cheer program last year won the national championships, and they're still one of the top programs in the country. And track has had all Americans in the indoor track, and, and so the track program's strong. We're getting ready to start men, men's and women's soccer. Uh, this fall. So we're excited about them. Baseball, softball, they're in season right now. And, and so we've got, you know, quite a few teams that are that are doing well. You know, basketball is definitely the most popular, which is kind of a common thing, especially, you know, March Madness happening right now. And uh, our men's basketball team won the conference championship and, and made it to the uh, first round of the, actually, they made it to the second round. Uh, they won their first round game in the NAIA championship. So, so the teams are doing well, you know, again, most of it is just a matter of getting the word out to the students who have their heads in books. And we've actually had students show up at games and they've got their laptops and during timeouts, they're studying. And it's not anything that I've ever seen before, but it's kind of common here. Uh, students are always trying to study and they've got to stay on top of it. Cause like I said, they can't, you know, just kind of coast through. So, but yeah, it's it's a matter of just kind of getting the word out that all the teams are really strong and you know we definitely need the student support. Okay. Well, that is definitely different. Um uh, I'm I'm I guess used to seeing students cheering and jumping around and different things like that, um, no matter what sport uh they attend. So bringing laptops and actually working. <laughs> <laughs> well, they'll cheer, they'll, cheer, they'll, they'll cheer also, you know, but again, right. they've, they've been known to bring their books and study, you know, at some point because they've got a test the next day. So <laughs> I definitely have to make it down to Xavier <laughs> to experience yeah. that. I definitely have to make it down there. And, but that, I mean, that, that speaks um, volumes for the institution that you have students who are that dedicated because uh, like I said, um, a lot of students that who I'm uh, used to, they wouldn't do that. They would just, I guess, wait until everything was over. And then they go back to their room and, you know, do whatever they have to do late into the night or, or what we used to call cramming um, in order to get right. that work in, which, 
you know, I guess bringing bringing some of your work with you to a place where you can work on it during breaks, that is more efficient uh, when, when you look at it. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I, I definitely mm-hmm. like the experience. It's one way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Um, well, who are the um, biggest influences in your coaching? Well, I, I talked with a number of coaches. Uh, Fred Chow, who's the coach at Old Dominion. Uh, Fred and I go way back. Uh, we were working together at George Mason University. He was actually my assistant with the women's team and then was also head coach of the men's team. And and so I talked to Freddie quite a bit on just some things volleyball-related. Uh, Luca Cristiano, who's one of the top coaches in Italy, you know, he's married to one of my former players. So I visited with him and talked to him strategy and drills and that sort of thing. Uh, Thomas Downs, who's in Scotland, uh, you know, I met him through Fred Chow. And so he's another one that I've, I've talked with quite a bit about some things uh, in terms of volleyball systems and training and, and that sort of thing. So I'd say those those three are probably the the ones that I could probably credit the most in terms of just having conversations about the game and and just trying to get the teams better. Okay. Um, well, th- this is a question I haven't asked anybody yet in relations to volleyballs. Um, and I guess I never really thought about it until you, you, you kind of mentioned this. Um, have any of your athletes gone to the next level? Um, at any of the at any of the um, schools where you've been, and and if so, what has that been like for them? Well, we I haven't had any yet here at Xavier, but when I was at George Mason, we had players that went on and played in France, Switzerland, um, Holland, Italy, and. Yeah, I get those are the, you know, kind of, did. and of course it, it gave them an opportunity to kind of travel the world and, and see different certain levels of play. And, and I know they had fun and it also kind of gave me an excuse to leave the country and go watch them in whatever country they were in. So, so yeah, it was, it was definitely a good experience for them. And, and I was happy they had that opportunity. Okay. Yeah. Cause that, I said, uh, dealing with uh, HBCUs a lot, um, it's been very rare that I've heard of any of them actually going to the next level. I guess most of them um, have focused more on their education um, or on their um, uh, work careers. And so um, that is, you know, that, I guess that's a question that I will have to start asking now just to uh, poll and see, you know, how many players are going to the next level or, um, even have that desire to go to the next level. Uh, cause I said most of uh, several who I know personally, once they stop playing, then a lot of them either become trainers or they become coaches if they want to stay in the sport. So, um, I, I right. definitely will have to start asking about, you know, playing at the next level. So, um, yeah. Well, there, there's a lot of opportunities to play in Europe, especially. Mm-hmm. And and so there's a lot of different levels, a lot of opportunities to play. So if they really want to play, they can make a connection. You know, volleyball is kind of a small world. You know, they can make a connection and and have an opportunity to go play on, you know, even if regardless of whatever the league is, you know, if they want that opportunity, there are definitely a lot of teams that are out there. Uh, at the different levels. And the way the European League is now, they kind of treat all the Europeans as coming from the same country. So previously, when like quite a few years ago, if it was a team in France, they could only have two non-French players. And even if it's somebody from Germany, they weren't from France, so they could only have one other person if they had a German. Well, now because of the Euro system, France, Germany, Italy, all of them kind of consider themselves kind of one country when it comes to the um, different uh, athletic teams. So now their foreign players tend to be players from China or players from, you know, Asian countries or South America or from the U.S. And so that's that's kind of opened a lot of things up for some more U.S. players to go play overseas because you might have a team with Germans, Italians, French, 
you know, Dutch players, and then you can have two more uh, non-European players on a team. So it, it definitely opened up a lot more opportunities for American players to go over and play. Okay. Well, I know on the on you know on the men's side, um, the person who I consider to be the greatest basketball player ever, uh, Wilt Chamberlain. Um, he was a he was just a, a freak of nature. He was an athlete, or, or what I guess what I would consider to be the idea athlete, because he's not only considered by many to be the greatest basketball player ever. He's also considered by many to be the greatest volleyball player ever. Um, And so are there some opportunities in the United States? Are there leagues in the United States that some of the athletes can inquire about? Or is that just not, you know, professionally, is that just not a thing in the United States? Well, one league that kind of got started recently and it kind of came out of around COVID was Athletes United. And so they kind of had a bubble in Austin, Texas, I think is where they were. And so mostly it was former U.S. collegiate players. There were a handful of international players. And I heard that they're trying to start maybe another league. It's just really tough in the U.S. because we have a lot of opportunities, probably way too much entertainment in other areas. So there have been numerous attempts to really get a pro league going in the U.S. And like I said, Athletes United was probably the the one that's been the most successful lately. Mm-hmm. And but again, it, there's always an effort to try. And in the meantime, players go over and play in Europe, or maybe they get might go play in Asia and that sort of things. You know, the top players in the U.S. Okay, okay. Well, um, Coach. Um, is there anyone who you would love to give a shout out to? Ooh, um, I'll, I'll give a shout out. I don't, I don't know what he's up to these days. I mean, I know he's training his old Dominion team, but I'll give a shout out to Fred Chow. <laughs> and um, we seem to be having technical difficulties. Uh, I will try to get Coach Kendrick back on. Um, to finish the interview. So please wait for one moment. And we're back. <laughs> Technology. <laughs> so um, um, you have mentioned Coach Chow. Um, are, are there others who you want to give shout outs to? Uh, you know, just some of my, my former players who might, uh, who might see this, uh, I'm still, you know, good friends with a number of them and, you know, certainly the, the Xavier current team, you know, they, they're working hard and trying to get better. So, and all of our recruits that we've committed at this point and, you know, anybody who's looking to join us next year. So I would say the Xavier volleyball program all around. Okay. Well, thank you, Coach Kendrick, uh, for participating in this chat. We hope that you and your program continue to succeed, and we will follow your development. And thank you, viewers, for watching this episode of Chat with HBCU Champions. Please visit ricefamegroup.org for more information on replays and more HBCU information. Have a blessed week. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm talking about young shakes. Try on to represent Jesse James. And this is for my city. Hey, hey, I do it for my city. Never neglect them. Educate her a name and like every one of my records. No, I'm not setting.
and ain't no future in your fronting, right? Gotta get this money, watch me get it, get it all night. Planet flying top flight, higher than space stations. That's why I gotta grind, cause I need it and I hate waiting. 